In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to generate a cone mapping model using the MICA toolbox and a standard color chart. Now, why do we need to make a cone mapping model? Well, that's because different species, different receiver visual systems have different spectral sensitivities. Here, for example, are a human's spectral sensitivities with their long wave, medium wave, and short wave receptors in the eye sensitive to different wavelengths of light. And notice, for example, how much overlap there is between the long and medium wave. And we can compare this, for example, to a blue tit. And this has uh, much better separation between the long, medium, and short wave, thanks to its use of oil droplets. But it also has this fourth UV channel. So it demonstrates how there can be quite marked differences between species and the colours that they perceive. So the same object with the same reflectance characteristics could look a quite different colour to a blue tit as it would to us humans. And cameras also have their own spectral sensitivities. We, as a rule, don't know what these are, but we do know that they will never conform perfectly to that of any given species, and they will vary between make and model and manufacturer of camera. Here's an example of uh, a digital camera's red, green, and blue. And if we were to try and uh, model that blue tip vision, we would also need a camera that's sensitive to the red, green, and blue wavelengths in addition to the ultraviolet end of the spectrum. The old method for generating a cone mapping model would have used these spectral sensitivities, which are very difficult to cal calculate, and they're not, as a rule, given out by manufacturers. The method would have uh, calculated the, uh, the cone catches for the camera as well as the receiver visual system and made a model to convert between them. But it is possible to do the same just using a standard color chart. The caveat being that you need to know the reflectance very precisely of all of the patches in the color chart. Um, the method is very, very sensitive to overall levels of reflectance of each of these color patches. So you need very good estimates of the reflectance. With the Micro Toolbox, I've bundled the measurements I've made of an x right color checker chart. You should just be able to buy the same chart online, um, and it should have very similar reflectance properties. I've compared the two charts that we have in our lab, and there's very good um, agreement, even though they're, uh, one is five years older than the other. The other thing we need to know roughly is the illuminant profile. This method is very sensitive to the illumination and you as a rule need to photograph under exactly the same illuminant as you're modeling. It doesn't need to be actually exact, for example, the D65 outside normal daylight profile will apply for almost all normal daylight situations because the no normalization process of the photos will control for big shifts in color. What it can't control for is the, the small spikes that occur in, in illuminance. So I would probably recommend avoiding using this method for any artificial light unless you're okay modeling the artificial light uh, photographing in the artificial light and modeling the receiver visual system under the same artificial light. But as a rule, avoid artificial light if you can with this method. So to create a cone mapping model for the visual spectrum, I have taken a photograph here of uh, an X-Rite color checker chart outside on a well-lit day, somewhere open with no shadows um, and nothing creating um, abnormal lighting on any part of the of the chart. I photographed this using a very cheap 60 pound smartphone just to demonstrate that this method can work with even the cheapest of cameras. So now I've taken that photo, I need to convert it into a um, calibrated multispectral image. So I will generate multispectral image and go through the normal process of um, calibration. So it is a uh, non-linear image in this case. If you have a raw photo, you'd select raw there. I've previously made a custom linearization function. I'll use the 91% white standard, and all of that is OK. I could choose here for linear normalized reflectance stack to have an output image where um, there are the three channels all in gray scale, or a linear color image, which we can measure from. But it's a bit dark, um, but it's fine to use. Now I'll just select that photo, select the linearization profile that I've created earlier, select the standard, 
and so here we have the calibrated image and so I can take measurements of this image and they will be nice and objective um, with respect to the camera. Now I need to measure each of these patches and there's a special tool for doing that um, if you go into camera calibration and measure chart. So we just need to specify how many columns and rows there are. Uh, this is preset to work with the x right color checker chart. Um, and you can change the scale here uh, if, if you need a smaller section in each of the uh, squares to be selected. Now it's asking me to place a point in each of the corners and the you need to start at the top left, then the top right, then the bottom right, and bottom left. So you need to go around in a clockwise fashion starting with this top left one and press OK and it will go through and here it has measured the, uh, the camera reflectance for each of the three normalized channels. So we can save this um, alongside our MSpec image, for example, just as a CSV. OK. With the results measured, I can now generate the cone mapping model. If I go camera calibration, generate cone mapping model from chart, it will ask me to select the results that we just measured. And I'll call this the Wiley Fox Spark X. And we can choose the visual system to map to here. So let's choose the CIE 1931 uh, XYZ. So this will give us CIE XYZ human output. The illuminant was the D65 natural lighting and the x right passport measurements. The chart reflectance spectra are saved in the image J folder uh, if you go to plugins, cone mapping and charts there you'll see the the example um, of the x-ray passport reflectance measurements so if you have your own chart you can add your own uh, reflectance measurements file there and you can leave these as defaults so here we go it's made the model it's given R squared values for each of the X, Y, Z uh, output channels, and in this case, they look very good. So the level of, of error is, is pretty minimal with R squared values of 0.99 or above. Um, if the R squared values are below 0.98, you should probably start being concerned that you might have measured your chart reflectance values incorrectly, or maybe the linearization profile isn't working very well. Now we can, we can check how well it works. We can open up uh, the multispectral image. Let's load up that chart MSpec image um, to a linear normalized reflectance stack. So here we have the camera normalized red, green, and blue channels. And we can convert this to a cone catch image now using the model we've just generated. Here's the Wiley Fox Spark X model that we've just created. And we can choose to remove negative values automatically. Negative values, they can occur for a multitude of reasons. The two main sources are linearization problems, where, for example, the standard reflectance doesn't match exactly um, the number that you've chosen, which can happen quite quite easily, actually, particularly if you're using two standards. Measuring the level of the dark standard is, is quite critical. Uh, negative values will also happen because a color is out of gamut. So if the negative values occur in very dark regions of the image, where it's dark in all channels, then that probably means it's uh, a linearization issue and it's not really anything to worry about. Where negative values happen in very colorful parts of the image, that means the color is probably out of gamut of either the, the camera or the receptor visual system or both. Um, and it's quite difficult to work. So you should be cautious of measuring very colorful patches where you have negative values. Anyway, click OK. Negative values are all shown in an overlay. In this case, so here is the, the, the cone catch image. There's the X, um, Y, and Z. You can see in the status bar here of the image, it's showing us the name, X, Y, Z. 
And here in the Y channel, we do actually have some negative values. So the negative values are shown in this overlay in bright red. This is a very dark section of the image, so it's not surprising we have negative values here. So that's nothing to be too concerned about. And if we wanted to, we could measure the, the chart reflectance values again in XYZ space.